Well, I'm back. The sun has come out here in Guelph. This is the craziest weather. Plus eight. It was pouring last night around one or two degrees. Just the most miserable weather on earth. I felt horrible because I booked off. It was my birthday. It was freezing rain. I just didn't want to go race in the mud. And um, two of them made a break in Jelona one. And I, I felt bad, but I told one of the owners, listen, I would rather wrestle a bear with fish in my pocket than race in the freezing rain. I spent 20 years racing full time. And you know what? Um, nobody feels worse than me. I know you guys pay the bills on a lot of these horses, but nobody feels worse than me when a horse makes a break at two to one uh, and I didn't show up to drive the horse. Um, so I didn't sleep the greatest last night. I felt really bad about it. But what are you going to do? It's one of those things where you got to turn the page and move on. I will go tonight in the mud, I guess. It's not pouring now. I'll go drive dancing at Middle in the mud. Hopefully he does good. And then we'll try and get back on track with the ones that made breaks last night. Del Crest Star Angel. Uh, I think Scott went to leave with her a little bit and she made a break. And Anyway, that happens. And uh, Dan and Boston Glide, obviously, we wanted to leave with them. We wanted to wind them up a little bit. And um, I think he just put them on the run. But it's not his fault. I mean, we told him to make sure he got out of there good with the horse. What are you supposed to do? Tell the guy to leave and then get angry when the horse makes a break leaving? It's my fault. Anyway, um, that's done. Um, but I do hate hate the weather right now. Plus eight in Guelph, going down to minus one, minus one tonight. Like, you wonder why the horses are sick? Humans are sick. I mean, Curtis threw up all week. Everybody's sick everywhere. Uh, I was a little bit sick, but um, Ollie was throwing up yesterday. Just, just the stupidest weather on earth. Plus eight, minus five, minus ten. Minus 20 with the wind chill last week, the day before we did the drone, I think. So that's how ridiculous that is. Um, but what are you going to do? Anyway, we're back. We're going to talk about somebody who's uh, 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 another trainer that's got four horses for us at Campbellville. His name is uh, Anthony McDonald. <laughs> I got four horses that are almost ready to qualify. I got to send them out to other trainers. I'm not training them. But uh, I'm training them right now. Um, some are, one of them is going to make you very happy. Uh, now I have pay the line blue chip back from Travis Henry. She's pretty near ready to go. She had got injured last week or last year, uh, last, I guess, four months, three months ago, we were stopping with her. And of course the last night before we stopped with her, she got injured and we had to stop with her for a while, put her in the pool. I thought she looked the best she ever looked yesterday training. So we'll see how she is, uh, this week. I am going to qualify her on Thursday at Mohawk. Then we have uh, Quartz Blue Chip. Now, Kevin's got a lot of horses coming back in, and he says, all our grooms, he said, we, you know, we're going to need another groom soon. Um, you know, we've one extra horse right now. So I looked at the shed row. I said, what about old Quartzy there? And he said, yeah. I said, you know, I've been in whatever, 2-9 with her in the jog cart here. He said, she just doesn't put out all the time, and that's always been her problem. It's been her attitude, and we hope that that would mature with time. Uh, we hoped that she would physically and mentally mature, and uh, she obviously did one more than the other. She looks great. Now, here's a typical, here's a, here's a perfect case. Uh, an extremely well-bred horse with a beautiful gait, just a beautiful way of going, beautiful white blaze, just everything beautiful about this filly, except for her, except for the way she is on the track. She's just not putting out the way uh, we need her to, and She's another one. Make no mistake. I can't justify, you know, I took some flack last week for selling King of the Ball. And I told people, if I can't justify turning them out, if I can't give you a reason to turn them out, then I hope. Hope is not a reason to turn a horse out. Not at, not turning three or a little bit later. I mean, it's just not. You have to, there has to be some speed and talent and ability and desire with these horses. And if it's not, we're just beating our head against the wall. And when it comes to Quartz Blue Chip, I own a massive chunk of Quartz Blue Chip, and so does Blue Chip Farms. And I don't think Mr. Grossman or myself are going to be very happy just racing a condition claimer. And if she's not going to be any good, what can you do? We did everything we could. We put the foundation into her. We gave her the same opportunity every other horse had. If she chose to squander it, well, that's on her, not on us. And in two weeks' time, she, I'm giving her two weeks. she got 14 days to see if she's going to tow the company line, so to speak, if she's going to actually be a good horse or whether she needs to be somebody else's horse. And there's lots of guys that'll be out there looking for a beautiful, well-bred filly. Um, and maybe a breeding firm will be one or two. I don't know. These are ex options we can explore. But if she's not going to come forward, then she'll have to leave. 
And that's unfortunate, but that's the reality of racing. And another horse that's in the same boat kind of, and has been for a long time, is Boldness. I brought Boldness up to the barn. I was going to start training him hard. He gets sick, sick the whole week. He was legit sick. Temperature of 103, coughing and snotty nose for about four days. Um, got him under control. Temperature's down. No mucus, no coughing yesterday. He jogged. I'll probably train him Tuesday or Wednesday. See if we can get him squared away. And the reason I say that is because we brought another horse up to the barn also that we did, I believe, get squared away. I trained Dewey Ann in 2.10 at the at, uh, Tomiko Training Center on um, Friday. Now, the problem is, is that that's the first fast mile. She's gone in a while, so I don't know how she'll come out of that mile. But I did want to see if, she, I did want to see if the, chewing, the shoeing changes and um, just allowing her to speed up. Because the problem is, a lot of these horses, when you get them, a lot of older horses, when you train them in 2.30, they look terrible. Some of these old war horses. But when you speed them up, they look great. And Dewey Ann, uh, I think the reason she stayed so long, one, she's well-bred, and I might be interested in breeding her. But two, I love her attitude. She is a worker. She loves to work. She's not put together perfect. That's obviously why we didn't pay that much money for her as a yearling. But, you know, she, that was on display, her first lifetime start. You know, babying her, get away last in a snowstorm. Not even sure if we should have raced her that day. The track was so crappy. She came out swinging, three wide down the backstretch, two six. You say, oh, two six. The track was horrible. She trotted her own last half in like a minute, last quarter and 30 seconds, and just showed what kind of tenacity she has. She's a, com she's a competitor, and, um, you know, I want to afford her every opportunity to get there. She's still a little hikey, a little out of gear, but I was very, very happy with what I saw from Dewey Ann on Friday. So that is it. That's my stable, my four, outside of the... 77 babies that's the four race horses we have they're going to be racing soon we'll move them out i suspect pay the line blue chip will likely go up to jared bothwell who has sally devee so she can stay in the pool uh who else quartz i'm not sure yet uh where she'll go um uh dewey ann again not sure where she'll go uh, she's a uh, three weeks away from the races if she continues in this trajectory we'll have her qualified by christmas uh who's the other one pay the line oh boldness boldness eh? He's not going to be ready before Christmas. If I train him on Wednesday and I like what I see and I train him again next week and I like what I see, then he's punched his card. He's safe for now, but he won't be ready to qualify by Christmas. He's only ever been in 220, 218. He's a good month away from the track. And I suspect I have some thoughts on uh, after watching him go and seeing him. He has matured. He has grown up. He's a bigger boy. He looks good. Uh, I just I have some I have some thoughts on how we might be able to combat that hikiness and roughness, and we'll see if it works. It worked on Dewey Ann. Let's see if it works on him this week. So that's my four. I'll be back in just a minute. I'll give you the lowdown, the skinny, on Jason, Harry, and Kevin Stable. Back in just a minute. So I'm back. I'm going to start off uh, the larger stables, I guess, since I have one now. Start off the larger stables with Kevin's Burn. Kevin's Burn is almost, I think almost all of them are ready to go. And Kevin has said to me, hey, can we uh, just wait a couple of weeks? Kevin is, he's uh, thorough. Let's say thorough. He's surgical. So American League, trained in 2-5, ready to go. Look good doing it. Uh, he's schooling next Thursday. Art Seeker trained. He's not going to be long getting ready because he is also on the naughty list. He is on the dispersal list and has a lot of work to do to climb his way off that list. Be My Delight, another one trained in 2.5. She looked awesome the other day. Trained with Better Call Mike, who also looked good. Those four are all either knocking on the door and ready to go or very, very close. Uh, I, I see Book the Bets crossed it. She still turned out, but she... No, she is on the turnout list. She's coming back this week also. She's going to start back up again uh, Christmas time. It's a bit of a rush if you have the big track horses because they stop for two weeks at Christmas, but the B tracks continue on. So Book the Bet will be back here in another couple of days, and then she'll begin jogging back. I would assume Kevin will have her ready around Christmas time. Cash in on me. I trained Cash in on me on two, in 207. Just so you know, full disclosure, 207. Trained him the other day with Majesty Boy and Kevin. I thought he was okay, but he's not there yet. And I'm debating. Uh, this is a giant big black colt. So he carries some equity as far as a road horse goes, as far as uh, the Amish go. So I am going to explore potentially selling this colt, but I wasn't disappointed with him the other day. The problem is what I see is a horse that still needs a lot of, a lot of physical maturity. And what he's going to be after that maturity, 
I'm not really sure yet. And that doesn't mean we're going to sell them, but I am going to quietly look around maybe and see what is out there for us in regards to cash in on me. Uh, as I said, 2.7, he's getting closer, but he's nine seconds away from being an effective animal. Six seconds away from being an effective B track horse. Uh, you might say, well, you know, farm track to B track, that's easy, but he's still got he's still got some speed to put in there. The quarters, those progressive quarters, are, are what we're looking for, and uh, he's not bad. He was better than I think everybody thought he would be the other day training, but he's still got a lot of work to do. And can we afford him the time? That's really the question I have to ask myself every day, and that I have to answer on in regards to our clients. Keep in mind, I own almost half of cash in on me. So I'm in the same boat as you. I was the one that lobbied to rest him. I was the one that, take, that took our time getting them back. And I'm not saying we're going to sell them, but we might maybe look and see what's out there. Because think of it this way. If we sell them now for eight to $12,000, fine. If we stop them for a month, six weeks, bring them back, train them down again, we got three months into this cult. Bills for that are around $7,500 right there. So we have this cult training back. We have another 7500 into them before we decide what we're going to do to them. Is it better to take that eight or 10 or $12,000 now and, and uh, say, we'll stop the bleeding today or invest another $7,500 into cash in on me? That's a good question. It's not one that I've answered yet, um, but I am asking it to myself on a daily basis. So cash in on me, I was happy with him the other day. He is progressing. There's still a lot of work to do with this guy. Cruising with Angus, not a lot of work to do with this guy. He's ready to go. Kevin trained him in 2.4 or 2.5, was very, very happy with him. I assume he'll be schooling Thursday, but as I said, Kevin is thorough and likes to take his time. He'll be definitely ready to go long before Christmas, put it that way. Dancing at Midland, racing tonight at Flamborough. He qualified pretty good, and then he gets sick. I don't know how it'll be tonight. Uh, you know, qualified, miss a week, indigo at Flamborough. I think he's picked for second. We'll see what happens tonight, but dancing at Midland, coming off the virus, and hopefully looks ready to go tonight. Dancing on my own, another horse knocking on the door. She was supposed to school last week, but she did get a little sick. It might be next Thursday. It might even be 10 days before we get to school. That filly, well, what am I saying 10 days? You can't school in 10 days. It's only Thursdays and Fridays. Thursdays and Saturdays you can school. So she'll either school in four days or six days or uh, 11 days, I guess, is when, uh, when she can school, 12 days. Uh, that was dancing on my own. Cold and steady, he's getting close, but Kevin said, you know, this is a big, heavy colt. Uh, I, th I think, I don't think he told me the exact time, but I believe he's been in 210, 212 of them. He's going to need a little more time. I'd say around Christmas time, this guy will be ready to go, and he looked great the other day training. If I knew Susie, I know she didn't race last week. She was sick. I assume he's either going to race her back Friday or, um, or earlier than that. I'm not sure. I don't think I'm down a driver. I looked at my drives that are upcoming and her name was down on the list. So maybe she's not entered yet. Candy Mac, he looks great the other day. I had two people come up to me, two of her trainers come up and say, what horse did Kevin train today uh, earlier on? I didn't see him go, but Kevin said that Candy Mac trained good. And if I have trainers go walking up to ask me who Kevin was training, I would suggest he looked Pretty good training. So he's getting very close also. Majesty Boy trained with Cash and Ami. Look good doing it. I know Kevin's going to ask for another couple of weeks with him. So he's very close also. Master Saver looked like a beast the other day. This is a colt that trained down, was never super sound, trained down, worked through what it were, the, the multiple things that bit at him and bothered him his whole life, right up until his uh, halfway through his 3 year Won some races, looked good. We turned him out and gave him lots of time put him in a pool. Man, oh man, he put weight on. He looks sound. He just looks like a different horse. So Master Saver is a horse I personally am anticipating his return, and he is very, very close. Road tripper, I'm going to say around Christmas time also. Uh, getting close again. He gets sick and then get a pus pocket and need a little time. So Kevin gave him the time. I saw him train the other day. He looked great as usual. Road tripper will be ready soon. That's Kevin's burn. I think he had some horses. Come in. Damn it. I know he had some horses come in. I'm going to find them on the turnout list here. Give me a second. Kevin had Time All Houdini came back in. He came back in on the weekend, and so did Time All Tulo. Both of them landed in Kevin's burn. So Time All Houdini, Time All Tulo, both shot, both jogging, both underway now. I was sure there was another one, too. Uh, 
these. I apologize. I should have this here. I don't know who the other one was. Oh! Uh, Heart 8. Heart, why is she not on the list? Heart 8 is also back in and uh, back in and going. I'm going to put that on here too. So Heart 8 is back and Buckingham is back. How did I miss these two? Buckingham and Heartache are both back in now. They just got shoes put on. So um, so there isn't much to say other than they come back in and they look great. Kevin was very, very happy with how they returned. So I'm happy too. Uh, so Heartache and Buckingham are also back at Kevin's Barn. I will cross them off here. Anyway, that's Kevin's Barn. We'll be back in a minute with Jason's Barn and Harry's Barn. One second. I'll be right back to you. Well, there was a bit more uh, book work to do than I thought because we had a number of horses come back in from the field to our trainers, so I almost missed Buckingham and Heart 8 with Kevin. I added War We Ultra to Harry's, and we'll get to her in a minute. So we're going to start with Harry's Barn. He has a lot of horses also that are knocking on the We have a lot of horses ready to qualify or almost ready to qualify. We're going to start with Autumn Wings. She's going to be the first of the year. Harry had said, listen, I can rush and have her ready for Christmas, but why bother? We kept her this long. You think very, very highly of her. I love what I see. Let's take our time. And we are, uh, and we are going to do that. I need to mute this. There. So Autumn Wings is going to be the first of the year. Fan the Flames raced poorly last week. Still picked up a fifth placed fourth, I suppose. But a poor fifth placed fourth. I would suggest after looking at the scope that it's a shoeing. You know, this crazy time of year, you put winter corks on them and the track gets soft. It's hard on them. Fan the Flames... You know, let's be honest. He's on the bubble to race at. Uh, he's on the bubble to race in uh, at Mohawk Woodbine, but he tries every week. He's such a nice horse, and I can't help but thinking. You know, his first start out twenty eight on the end of it. I can tell you the first thing I'm going to do is put James back on him, and I'm not going to drive him because um, we're going to figure out exactly what's going on with him. Maybe you know, uh, maybe James just going to get along better with the horse. I don't know, but we're going to find out on Thursday. Hopefully, he can drive him. I have to remember this call Harry and tell him to put James on him, not me. Anyway, final answer's back going. He's ready to start training. Still bites that right line a bit and still a little rolly behind, but that was always him. Harry had said to me the other day, geez, you know, someone's bothering that colt left hind a little bit. I said, yeah, he's always been like that. He said, I don't think so. I said, well, we were a gating strap on the outside of him every start of his life, so I'm going to say he always had a little something left hind that bothered him. It could be nothing more than maturity. Sometimes they just need to start training on them. You'll see a lot of these horses right before you start training. They start to show this exhibit the same little minor issues that were there before. But once you start training them down and they start to put on that, that stronger three-year-old muscle on their skeleton, then you start to see them look a lot better. So final answer, about to start training. We'll probably run them up to the clinic to make sure everything's on the up and up, but I suspect it is. Just a Tad. Now, of course, I own 98% of Just a Tad. Me and Greg Schoner own Just a Tad. And uh, we were ready to, ready to almost start getting him ready to qualify. And Harry said he's off left hind. Take him to the clinic. He had an OCD in his right hind ankle and some swelling in his left hind leg. They couldn't find anything wrong with the left hind leg, but they said the OCD could come out. I said, well, in for a penny, in for a pound, I guess. Let's take that OCD out. Just about to get him operated on, the leg blew up left hind again. Now, about five weeks ago, six weeks ago, we had, seven weeks ago now, we had uh, just a tad castrated. And all the incisions were closed. Everything seemed fine. But one side of the sheath blew up a little bit. Had a little swelling in it. Left hind leg blew up a little bit. Harry said, do you think uh, it could be that castration? I hope not. Uh, I said, well, draws blood if his white count is neutrophils. So if the indicators are that his white count's high and his body is fighting something, then yeah, it could be. Sure enough, he had a high white count. Took him up to the university and uh, the words of the surgeon, not me. She said, well, first off, he has an abscess. So we have to open that up, drain it. Secondly, that OCD, uh, we can't take that out because once we drain this abscess, he has to move. You're going to have to jog him. With the OCD coming out, he needs stall rest. You can't jog him. So, oh, oopsie. So, uh, what we did was we drained the, the abscess and we'll continue jogging him and see how he comes. And uh, he was never off from that OCD 
um, just biting the line a little bit. And she said a lot of that could have been from this abscess. She said, in her words, buckets of pus come out of that leg. So we drained it, cleaned it out. Now he's got to start back jogging. It'll be at least 30 days before we can decide if we're going to go ahead and take that OCD out. And once we do that, that'll be another 30 days standing in the stall. So the road to, rec the, road to the races for just a tad just got a little bit longer. As I said, once we opened them up, and we had to, we got to do what's right for the horse. Once we drained that, that uh, abscess, obviously at that point, you really are in for a penny, in for a pound. I'm not going to spend a couple of thousand dollars operating on them, a couple of more thousand potentially taking OCD out and then just Amish them. That will be a tough, long day. And of course, I own almost all of them. So just a tad, Merry Christmas. He is going to need, he won't be ready till February, I suspect. Unless we train him back and decide that he doesn't need that OCD out of his ankle. Lots of horses can race if they're in good places. Even the surgeon said, I wouldn't jump to, circ I wouldn't jump to conclusions on the, on the OCD until you see him on the track after this abscess is healed. She goes, he'll make 100% recovery from the abs abscess. No big deal there. So I guess we'll see just a tad on the shelf for a little while. Well, not on the shelf. He's going to be jogging, but he is not likely to be racing. Next, a horse that will be racing around Christmas time is Lima's son, and I am excited about this. This horse has always excited me. He's just a nice horse, always want to do his work. Many of you that know, have followed us for a while, know that he, um, he had some issues. He hurt himself, minor issue, at two. We opted to stop with him, brought him back at three, and ended up with a major issue in his left hind, left hind? Right hind suspensory. So we had to stop with him for almost an entire year, and he's almost ready to go again. So I'm waiting with bated breath to see Lima Sun. I know a lot of other people are really excited about his return. Horse that I was very excited about the other night, Lincoln James. Lincoln James, so many of you have noticed after 20 years, I do not like driving in the mud. And unless I have to go, I won't. And, um, you know, people can say, well, you should. Well, we work all day at the burn. I write emails all day. I talk to our clients all day. And then the, the thought of looking at the window to see pouring rain at plus two, drive an hour and 15 minutes down the road. Surely to Jesus, somebody can race Lincoln James and do well. It's not like I did well with him the week before at Mohawk. So um, I was a little, I was biting a hole in my lip when he raced, obviously. But Travis Henry did a fantastic job driving him. Drove him absolutely textbook perfect. And he jogged. So, as I said to the people in the email, we're not racing Lincoln James four times a month. He's going to race three times a month. He got a break after his preferred three win. He'll obviously have to go into the preferred two as next start, which will be next Sunday at Flam Borough Downs for uh, Lincoln James. So, he was awesome. He won. He raced good. Now, on to the preferred two. I thought, I think. Now that we know he races very comfortably and good on a half, and he always did, obviously, to mark a 149 on a half, we can bounce him around back and forth, Mohawk, B-Track, Mohawk, B-Track, and have some fun with this horse and hopefully put some money away. Uh, Linnea, almost ready to go. I wish I could tell you how fast he's going. I actually can't. I know he had been in 212. She's very, very close. Biggest thing with this filly is her health. We vaccinated her once. We're going to vaccinate her again if we have to and uh, keep a real, real close eye on her. This is uh, probably her and Sunshine Inn are the two fillies that spurred this um, dramatic change in the way that we treat illness and sickness and allergies and everything else in the burn. And Linnea is almost ready to go. So we're going to see if we can, obviously there's not that many allergies in the winter, but we're going to try and get her in into classes where she can win. If that's even a condition claimer, I mean, she gets 100% allowance right up until uh, January 1st where it drops to like, 80 or 75 or something so Linnea should be safe all winter and have a good winter racing because she's simply faster than those horses she's going to race against maxwell plum almost ready to go harry said he really likes how he how he's been going the last two weeks really likes what he sees i've always liked what i've seen with this colt that's why i still own a big chunk of him and i'm happy to maxwell plum almost ready to go behind the gate ready for the beach harry has him ready to go he's trying to hide him from me he said ah oh, can i have a couple more weeks no you may not Ready for the Beach is going into the condition claimers. And if he's such a good horse and Harry's right and he's really matured into a nice horse, he can prove it to us pretty quick. So Ready for the Beach will be qualifying soon and making his debut on the B-Tracks 
probably in Flam well, either at Flamborough or London or both. Screaming Hawk's going to need a little more time. Harry is taking his time with him, and I'm happy to give him time. Uh, he looked great on the track the other day. He's been in 25. Probably not going to be ready till the first part of the year. Screaming Hawk matured into a big, giant horse, just like we knew he would. And his attitude is maturing also. It's not that he had a bad attitude, but he's still at Angus Hall, right? Sometimes he can lose his mind. He goes from uh, walking to running away pretty, pretty quick. And that's always been indicative of that breed. So we're trying to keep him quiet, but train him down. And Screaming Hawk has been great so far. Sunshine in. She's almost ready to go in the exact same boat as Linnea. I saw her training two weeks ago. Uh, so I thought she looked tremendous. She's put some weight on. She's got that big, powerful gait she had before. Now it's just a matter of keeping them healthy. The butler did it. Looked good again training the other day. We crowded some splints. Harry made some changes. Um, had made some changes to him. He said, just give me some time with this guy's feet. Kill him. Uh, I just need to work on him. And from what I saw, I thought for sure two months ago, I would say absolutely not. Get him training. Get him going. But... After what I've seen the last two months, I think this horse has, one, the breeding, and two, the ability to be a better horse, and it looks like he wants to now. So by all means, take your time. Too far gone, almost ready to go. I think Harry said we'll be schooling her on Thursday. That's good. Really waiting to see this filly come back, see if she can do some damage. I ended up eating up a bunch of shares of her in the fall, as you know, and uh, hope I don't regret that because she is, she is a very good-looking filly in her own right. Last, certainly not least, War We Ultra. Just getting the shoes on her Monday. She hasn't actually started jogging back, but she is on the facility and will begin going Monday afternoon. So that's War A We Ultra. That's Harry's burn. Be back in a minute with Jason's burn. Uh, be back in just one minute. Back here with Jason's burn. We talked about my burn talked about my four we talked about kevin's burn talked about harry's burn we're going to get a look at jason's burn now obviously our vicka's ready to come back in she's on the turnout list but she is ready to come back in probably somebody asked me the other day anthony you didn't give her much of a rest well we weren't going to rest her and then all of a sudden she had this huge growth spurt we do have to put some work into them and she's had a month off now and if it hasn't been a month then it'll be a month we'll bring her back on so if it's a few more days it's a few more days but our vicka is almost ready to come back in and start jogging and training again and racing soon. Boston Glide. Took some heat last night over Boston Glide. I didn't go and drive. It was my birthday and it was pouring rain. It was like plus two. Just probably the most miserable weather on earth. Uh, outside of a monsoon, hurricane, tornado, uh, multiple lightning strikes. All of which I may actually rather drive in than plus two and pouring rain. And um, I put bread on the horse and... We had told Brett, you know, wind him up and see if you can get him away close. I'd love to see him race on the front. And he made a break behind the gate. So uh, that's on me. That's my fault. And uh, we'll rectify that this coming week, hopefully. Casanova's Jewel. I saw him train for the first time. Training back, he looked great. Big Cass. Cass has always been a heavy lifter, a big worker. And his road to the 2019 season just started the other day. He's been back in jogging, but just started training. Canali Hanover, I schooled. Uh, my apologies, I didn't make an update for Canali Hanover. I schooled Canali Hanover in 159 last Thursday. Had some mucus in discharge after we scoped him. Did have some mucus, no blood, not a lot of redness, but a lot of mucus. So we're going to clean that up. I said to Jason, maybe we'll, maybe we'll qualify him next Saturday at Flamborough Downs. So uh, just to give him a little class relief. He's going to have to race in a half sometime in his life. So maybe just give him a little relief and get him over to Flamborough. We'll qualify him there. Curious winner, actually made a break training the other day. Said to him also, I said, you know, it looks like his feet are starting to hurt him. He went from a soft track to a hard track, uh, trained him on a hard track, and he made a little break in one turn. He had a splint that was bothering him too. So little little maintenance stuff, not a big deal. Curious winner is getting closer. He's still a little ways away yet. Del Crest Star Angel, another horse that raced last night that made a break. I believe there was a little bit of an error there. Scotty went to leave out with her, and, you know, I drug her off the gate and just wanted to get a flat line on her. Maybe it's Maybe it's... I guess Jason's fault or my fault for not saying that I just wanted to keep her keep her comfy and keep her flat, but she ended up making a break last week, uh, last night. I'd like to race her a couple more times and turn her out because she's a big, 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 big girl, and she's going to need some time to fill out. Happy Holidays threw up another three the other night. She hates a deep track, and she hates when they go fast in front of her and stretch her out. She can go fast, but she needs a breather somewhere, and when they just keep going and going and going, kind of sucks the life out of her. So we raced on a very deep track, and the guy got over the half and 58 on the front end. They won a mile in two minutes. She finished third. 
She raced okay, but not her cup of tea. Ivanka back going now. Looks great. This filly really filled out. Really, really is big now. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, racing her and not an angel this year. But Ivanka is getting close to, not getting close at all. What am I saying? She's not going to be ready to go probably till February. But looks good jogging right now on the track. Jelona. Jelona get up for a victory last night at Flamborough Downs. That was the only, I, I tell you what, after watching the first two make a break, we scratched one, two counting me. I didn't go. Stonebridge Joel was sick. She didn't go. And um, the first two made breaks. I'll tell you what, I was chewing on my nails some good when Jelona went behind the gate. Colin Kelly drove her perfect, come first over, grind them into the ground, and got up for the W and not claim. She'll probably claim next week, I guess. I don't know. But Jelona... Looked good. Looked great. Winner last night at Flamborough Downs. King of the Ball. He shouldn't be on here. He sold. We sold King of the Ball. As I said, this is the time of year when we're going to start uh, taking a serious look at who wants to be a horse and who isn't really sure and who actually doesn't. If they don't want to be racehorses, I can't really protect them now, can I? And King of the Ball, uh, his attitude had diminished, I would say, over the last little while. Sure, we might be able to turn him out. Maybe he'll come back and be a good horse. But as I said to you, how can I turn a horse out on hope it's just not going to happen you're gonna to have to give me something to work with and a bad attitude is definitely not something to work with something to work without and unfortunately the king of the ball chapter of the stable closed on saturday he is now sold mystical mission uh qualified back the other day i think i've given you guys uh horses to bet uh, maybe five times in all five i was dreadfully wrong so take it for what it's worth Mystical Mission was great his first start, got spooked and shied away from the whip, made a break. We requalified him the other day, and he's going to be in at Mohawk probably on Thursday. Might be worth a look, because I think he's sitting on a pretty good mile. Feels like the old Mystical Mission, just need to get him polished up and back in racing form, which I think he's very close to doing. So Mystical Mission uh, is going to be in to go on Thursday at Mohawk, I believe. Keep an eye out for him. Not an angel. I just talked about her with Ivanka a minute ago. Not an angel looks good. She filled out. She's big. She had that little tiny injury left hind that bothered her and kind of uh, was pesky all last year. And, and uh, looks like everything's a go from here. She looks great. Probably won't be ready again until the uh, middle part of February. But she'll be ready at some point. Uh, back going. It looks as good as ever and grew up really, really nice. Stolen Dance was sick as a dog for an entire week. Of all of Jason's Brown, the ones we had to scratch, everything else, this filly was the sickest. Had a temperature for three or four days, had tons of mucus, coughing her head off. Now looks good. Uh, we missed a full week with her. I don't think we can even school her on Thursday, but we can certainly jog her up and train her a little bit this week and then get her schooled. Maybe we'll take her to Flamborough. If we end up going with Canali Hanover to qualify, maybe we'll take the big girl over to Flamborough. Uh, and school her and see how she looks there. And last, certainly not least, Stonebridge Loyal. Philly had a, a short field. There's a bunch of scratches in the race last night. They went with a four horse field after all the scratches. But the temperature of 101.8 is too high to race. And we are going to have to keep an eye on that. Uh, Jason obviously caught that right away. And uh, we scratched her. We'll race her back next week. No discharge, eating all her supper, just a little temperature. Uh, when you have to give her, say for instance for you, when you take a Tylenol, you can't race. When we give the horses butte to drive that temperature back down to 99.5, that is, uh, that's a medication you can't race on, obviously. Um, so, once you make the decision that she's too sick, she's sick enough, she needs some Tylenol, some butte, then uh, she's obviously sick, too sick to race. So, Stonebridge Loyal, we're looking at next week, she was going to race on Saturday. I assume London will likely be your first start. Anyway, that's Jason's barn. All these barns have a lot of horses getting really, really close. And it should be an exciting December for everybody here at the stable.ca. We have a lot of horses turned out. They're all coming back. I'm going to talk to them for you. Talk to, talk to you about them in just a minute. Quite a few horses still on this list, and all of them are almost on their way back. Going to run through the turnouts real quick. We had some horses scratched off the turnout list because they're back at the burn now. Buckingham, Hard Eight, Book the Bets coming back this week. War We Ultra's back. So we're going to run down, our Vicka's coming back. All right, we're going to run down this list really quick. Most of these horses are coming back this week. Only a few of them will remain out. Lawmaker is going to stay out till February 1st. Cruising in style, probably around Christmas time, he'll come back in. And White Tiger, January 1st. Those are the horses that will be coming back in 
and when they'll be coming back in. Those are the ones that are going to be a little later. All these other ones are either on their way back or will be. Starting with Arvika, she's going to be coming back in another couple of days. I would suspect she'll be back in Jason's barn by definitely before the open house. So sometime in the next uh, seven or eight days, Arvika will make her return. Bay Jewel will be back too sweet. She'll be back very, very soon. Uh, she got a month and a bit off. More than enough time for her. Uh, she'll be back in Harry's Barn, I guess, uh, within the next few days. Book the Bet, she'll probably come back in with her. Book the Bet's coming back in. Cruising in style, as I said, closer to Christmas. His last start was at the Breeders' Crown, which was when? Uh, October, mid of, middle of October. So again, we want to give him two months. He'll be back in uh, near the end of December. Dance Hall Babe. It's a good question. Dance Hall Babe, get a little more time, I think. Probably bring her back in around the 15th or 16th of December. Lawmaker's going to be out to February 1st. He's in Ohio right now at Winterwood Farm. Beautiful farm. It's like an entire province with a fence around it. The place is huge. There's Lawmaker Cruising in Style and White Tiger are turned out there. So is Oso Pine and Twinsburg, but they're coming back this week. They'd be on their way back now, but they got to draw blood to get across the Canadian border. You have to draw Coggins and get international health papers. Those are getting done now. He'll, they'll be back, uh, I would say, by next weekend. Maybe for the open house. Oso Pine and Twinsburg will be back. Maintenance man, he'll be coming back soon. First truck going that way will pick him up. Oso Pine's coming back this week. Springbridge Proud. Now, Springbridge Proud's going to stay down with Ron Burke. He's turned out at the same farm, I believe, as Oso Pine and them. Um, I'll try and get an update on him in the next couple of weeks, and then we will uh, we'll get you informed. But Springbridge Proud was out and will be coming back with Ron Burke's other two-year-olds. Stonebridge Simba will be coming back soon. I would suspect in the next week or so, I'll have to send an email to Andrew into the farm in New Jersey where he's at to let them know he's going to need international papers and Coggins. Sunshine's Finest coming back soon also. He'll be going back to Harry's Barn within the next 10 days. Probably another horse back for the open house. So will be Twinsburg. Time all Houdini and Time all Tula are already back. They're both in Kevin's Barn. Check them off. Uh, West 52nd, he raced on the 13th of October, so around open house time, he'll be coming back also. White Tiger, first part of January, and our boy Yes is back. Yes, 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 he is back. Uh, right now, I saw him in Jason's Burn, so I'm getting shot on Wednesday, so he's got a few days of jogging back. He'll be ready to go, I guess, first part of March, end of February. Anyway, that's all the turnouts. Got a lot going on. We got over 140 horses still that are under our umbrella that will be back in and going for the most part, except for three of them, all on December 15th. Full house here at our, our down at Campbellville at Tomiko Training Center. A lot going on, and the open house will kick it all off, obviously, on December the 9th. Be back in a minute. What am I going to do in a minute? I'm going to give you a little heads up on some horses I trained this week. I'm going to tell you how they went, and I'm going to let you know about everybody else. <laughs> 